Hey everybody, it's Andy here, aka Montolio, and we're back for another Vintage League, and we're bringing back some old school Hogak Jund, Hogak Fine Jund, and a couple of years ago this was at the top of the food chain as S tier decks, and I have a very sweet spot for this type of build, I've had a lot of success with it in the past, and why am I playing this deck? Well, I think traditionally when you're playing against Xerox style decks, uh, this deck actually has some very solid game to it and right now blue black Luris and esper Luris are right up there at the top of the metagame and uh, i think that this deck could potentially have some pretty good stuff against those lists now i don't want to get too far ahead of myself but leyline of the void is the card that hurts this deck the most and um, they don't run leyline now there are some people that of course give up their Luris post board and do side into ley line that is a thing but i don't think it's common and for that reason i think that this warrants uh, giving this list a try and of course one of the neat things about this type of list is it is not 100 percent relying on its graveyard it can cast its spells and beat you down despite it's not the most efficient at doing it it does run death right shamans you can cast root wallas you are able to pump up a blazing root walla and believe you me that can close quickly so that's why I'm going to give it a try. I love the deck. And of course, I realize that Jewel is also really putting up solid numbers right now. And we are pretty weak to Jewel in general. But we do get better post board. We've got Mind Break Traps, uh, Pyroblast. We've got Collect Roos. We do have the Sejus. We are not as reliant on the Graveyard. So we will get better against them post board. Um, I, I, I would think that we're dogs against the Jewel. But we're going to give it a go and see how it goes today. And of course, Dredge, I do feel like we have a favorable matchup. So that said, guys, appreciate you hanging out as always. Like, comment, subscribe. I do try and get back to everybody, and we're going to see you in round one. Okay, guys, here we are in round one. Um, we didn't win the die roll, but I'm going to test this one out. I mean, you can't go wrong with a bazaar. Oh, Chancellor. Okay. Looks like we're playing against Initiative. So hopefully we don't... Oh, that's a good one. So we're up against a Chancellor. Okay, so noted. So that worked right. We wanted to get this one countered first. Our green one is better because we have more ways to pump it. Okay, solid turn. The Krakus is slightly problematic. Hmm. Do I want to pump here and just jam damage as hard as I can? I think I'm going to just do this this time, and I'm going to get a couple more creatures out. Make this one black. I'm going to do a Stitcher Supplier. I guess I can't really cast two because uh, we did hit a Bloodgast, which is solid, and a Hogak, which I can cast next turn. Problem is they have a Krakus. So something to be note, keep note of. And hopefully this Mana Crypt will do some work for me. Unfortunately, I don't have a basic in my deck. I, I did, preceding 
loading my list up, but I did change it back to a Badlands because I wanted to move to Pyroblast in my sideboard, so I needed the extra red source. Yeah, Dungeoneer is a good one. Now, Wasteland from me would change the trajectory of things significantly. I do think we want to land, though, try and get this Bloodgast in. It's the way I'm rolling. Yep, that works just fine. Yaks for days. Well, my opponent is at eight. I'm going to cast a Deathrite Shaman here, and I'm going to, I mean, if my opponent loses this flip here, it uh, puts them on a Deathrite, two at Deathrite activations and a hit. Or a hit, if they take the hit straight up from the Hollow One, but I, I am in some trouble here, potentially. Chromox, okay. They do have a Chancellor. They're still a little ways away from casting that. Now they're going to go on the Forge. And if they lose the flip next turn, they're just dead. Hopefully they have no follow-up here. Yep. So this one's slipping away from me here, but I still have a chance, of course. That's going to untap the dungeon here. So it's going to take my hollow one. Uh, sure, they're going to goad me. I'm going to take my attack away. Just the one spell I can actually eat. That's kind of crazy. I realize it's going to get wastelanded here. It, it just is what it is. Because of the presence of Archon here, it doesn't... Uh, change much so they can go into catacombs or draw here but if they lose the flip we win and if they win the flip we probably lose i 
It's always a little of solitude. We'll just have six here and see what the fates have in store for us. I did win the flip. So that'll put them in the throne. If this is a solitude, I just lose. My opponent definitely had a good hand this game. A little bit of a funny start from them with leading with the Wasteland. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe that was a misclick, but I shouldn't have even been in this game. We have the sideboard. I don't think we have a, a great setup for uh, this matchup, but I feel like we have some of the just natural tools to be able to fight this. But pretty important we win this game if we want to beat initiative. Being on the draw is just, on the game three is not optimal. Okay, I mean, that's not bad. I still have a, oh, they can do, oh, an opponent controls, okay. So I should technically be able to survive this turn. And put some on a flip. I cannot block anything. Okay, six life. Everything on taps. I can get Holgak in. I can bounce it because I can't actually wasteland them here. Mana Crypt flip bust, guys. The fact that we get another chance out of here is pretty sweet. We've ostensibly done nothing the last two, two turns and... We get another chance to win here. And they won both flips. Okay, they got us. Okay. Um, hmm. Collector Roof is what I'm considering here. Like, it is a really good card against my opponent, but the likelihood I'm going to be able to cast it in time for it to matter is just too small. I'm going to go about my business here. Like, I can tell you from a Cradlevine perspective that it has very good game against White Initiative. This deck is a little bit more finicky. but obviously extremely powerful when it's working. Yeah, I even got a little bit of insulation here from a tabernacle with that mox. So we'll see if they have it. Ooh! 
Yuck. I'm gonna give up on uh, worrying too much about uh, getting these vines back. What I'm hoping is my opponent's gonna play a Chrome Mox and I will be able to nuke both of them. And we'll get a little bit of value out of the Blood Gas next turn, perhaps, if they don't wasteland us. If they do, then so be it. Can't do anything about that one. Not yet, anyways. Where that becomes a dangerous play is if they wasteland me in past turn. They just gave me the value for... I mean, I guess they could swords me still, but... Yeah, they are doing that. Okay. What is this, Athalia? Vexing Bobble. Okay. Your bobble is good. Like I can cast this root wall but I think I'm more interested in a land aren't I I think I am Can't quite cast Hogak, but next turn I can. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a pretty good beatdown coming in. Now they're going to probably kill my, my Badlands here because they're in, in trouble, but... Oof. Bloodgast. Probably could have saved that till next turn, but every damage I get in here is solid. I still am going to keep churning because I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going for blood ghasts. I guess the risk of that is that I'm, I'm putting lands away that I don't want to necessarily. I just draw. My opponent is on a one turn clock here. 
And I will play the Dryad Arbor. If I have to sacrifice it. Oh, that was a mistake. I could have put my opponent to two. Forgot about the Bloodgast. Oops. That was a bit of an error. I was too focused on how I was going to utilize the Dryad Arbor, but it, I, I can just sacrifice it to pay for the blood gas. Now it's fine. Not sure how my opponent gets out of this. I guess it would be play a land, sacrifice Vaxing Bobble into Black Lotus into Miscellaneous Creature, where, of course, I would be punished for the way I played last turn. Do you forgive me, I am a little bit rusty on the Hogak Vine, but... So that does make me wonder, do I want another Beseju? I mean, that's a one of, right? And do I want Mind Break Traps? I don't think so. Uh, the reason I'm putting the Besage in is to increase my ability to have mana to pump things, cast things. We will mulligan this one. And we will mulligan this one. Good boy, guys. I guess, I guess I could cast Stitcher Supplier, keep Vigor. Okay, I'll keep this one. And look, it's not good, guys. One of the problems with this particular build is we don't have serum powders. And the common wisdom was that play a chrome mox here. Oof, play a chrome mox. Three ball. Wow. That's a problem, isn't it? Fantastic. Okay. I am penciled into wastelanding here. Just have to hope we can outdraw our opponent on lands. Wow. Okay. Land, come on. I'll literally take any type of land I can get. And even a bazaar suffices. Look, I'm not complaining here. I can now cycle a hollow one. You know what's funny about this is super awkward, but um, I, I'm, I'm going to play it, and it doesn't do anything right now, but in my upkeep, I will cast Once Upon a Time and let the Dryad Arbor die. It's not perfect, guys, but I'm not complaining. Hmm. 
Okay. The Wasteland was a really good draw for me. This now is going to allow me to cast a Death Rite, hopefully. And Wasteland, and the, any land they play. Except the basic. Hmm. Part of me wonders, do I just get beating down with a blazing root wall here? Or do I do a stitcher supplier? Gonna maximize my mana potential here. Did not mean to do that. Probably should have addressed that tabernacle. This time I'm going to stitch your supplier. And I did hit Hogak. So the question I have is here, I mean, I can pay for all this stuff. I'm so far ahead. Now, Krakus can wreck my plan here, but if they don't have that, I'm really far ahead. Wow, what a fantastic game that was. I think I mulliganed to four on that one and ended up, really punishing my opponent with that that big turn one Trinisphere that they had and uh, was able to get lands in succession there and outdraw my opponent and just kill them. That was a pretty low prevalence win from me, but we will take that. Jun Hogak Vine is back on the flex. Okay, not sure what Matthias is on, but they can be playing anything. We're going to keep this beauty. Uh, I know Matthias has most recently had a lot of success with Oath of Druids. Perhaps they've moved off that. I, I don't know. I think they did last week and we're playing something different, but we'll see. And for those of you unaware, Matthias Hardstyle is the hardest salter on the vintage platform these days. I, I never get through a match without receiving... Or I shouldn't say that. I never get through a match win where Matthias does not give me the uh, clap, clap, something like if I could draw as well as you type thing. It's uh, pretty unbelievable. Yep. And key, okay. So hopefully we can draw into a force of vigor here. Um, I'm not too worried about negation if they have it with the once upon a time. But let's see what we can do here. We did hit a strip mine, and I think I like that line. The question I have about it is, is it worth actually worrying about that right now? probably is. It's also nice to cast once upon a time. Again, I haven't cast it in so long. So this looks like a jewel deck that we're playing against.
And we should be able to do some pretty strong stuff next turn. That was a good one. Soul Ring, okay. So they're likely to go off on me next turn. Perhaps I can play a ring right now. More time bolt. Okay, that, they got it. Okay. So I was feeling actually pretty good about myself there. But uh, Matthias uh, hit the Ancestral and it was looking really strong there. Okay, so we're going to transform pretty nicely here. We're going to bring in some Vasejus. Um, I certainly don't feel like I need all these Hogax. I like it. The reason I'm keeping the Death Rite Shaman is it, it helps pump my Root Wallace. It helps to cast my Collector Roofs. Like, perhaps in that in that vein, I should be taking the Blood Gast out and, and keeping the Death Rite, so I'm not 100% sure, but... I mean, I'm keeping it. Well, let's see what we got here. Bazaar first. We did find a Vigor. Time walk is good. I'm not going to vigor here on, on just the mocks. I need to get more value than that, despite it could be quite costly. If this is a ring, it's it's unfortunate. But Okay. Yucky, yucky. This looks like a jewel. Ooh, far worse. Okay. I hate to do this, but I feel like I need to Vigor now. Oh, they just have Force. Yep. Oh, P.O. Very nice. Well, we are definitely losing this game. I, I guess the, my way out of this is to find a collector roof here. But I could very well but just be dead right now. Okay, what can we do here? Okay, I got a spin. Well, can't deal any damage here.
It's not good, guys. But we've got a pretty good army. Probably just going to nuke this ancient tomb here, I think. Just try and slow my opponent enough. I know they have a jewel. But pretty low prevalence we can win this one. But if they somehow brick here and we, we get to deal them a whole bunch of damage next turn. 12, 16. And that would kill them on the upkeep with uh, the one ring. Maybe just cast another ring here as an option as well. Okay. They got metamorphs, okay. One ring. Yep. All right, well, no, honestly, I don't even really feel like this does much, but I just I desperately have to try and do something, right? I do have lethal on the table now. But of course, the more cards they draw, the worse this gets for me. So this is going to be a jewel with all likelihood. Oh, no, they're just going deep on the uh, ring. Yep, that makes sense. That's a far better line. Okay. Nothing like discarding four cards from your hand and not even having to blink. We are getting some value off our upkeep bazaars. Want to misstep it? Good news is... If we can get to a game three, I, I do like some of the tools we have. We just didn't really find them this game. And like just a metamorph is not enough for them to get out of this. I think it's probably jewel time is my guess. Nope. Yeah, that should do it. Okay. Bergamo. Hmm, this is pretty rough. Hmm. 
I could gamble on finding a land to cast into Stitcher Supplier. I'm going to keep it and try it. I'm a gambling man. This is never a winning recipe. I shouldn't say that. It's rarely a winning recipe to gamble on a once upon a time. But this deck does have lands to cast its spell in it, spells in it. And so if it fails, uh, we do have a chance of drawing something, depending on what my opponent's playing. We'll see. So we got severely punished here. We did not even find a land. I think I have to take Deathrite Shaman. We'll pass. Let's see if we can find our way out of this, guys. We played a bad roll, bad gamble here. Hmm. All right. At least we have some interaction here. We're, of course, getting lit up badly here, but what am I going to do? Is this a tinker? Okay, well, the gig is up. Guess I'll get rid of the death right just to conceal some information here because I think the likelihood I win this game is so low. I mean, my opponent can probably deduce what I'm playing just by the fact I have uh, Once Upon a Time. So I don't think they had a counterspell there. Otherwise, I think they would have forced that Vigor because it doesn't look like they have an artifact for their Tinker. I admire my opponent's two basic islands here. Do this before Hull, uh, Hull Breacher's online. Now we'll show them what we are. Oh boy, guys. You may recall I said casting once upon a time in this way when you don't have any relevant lands in your hand is not a winning strategy. Well, I didn't mean it was this bad. Okay. What's interesting is my opponent is not really doing anything here. Love to cycle that, but of course I cannot leave them with an Urza. It just is what it is. And I don't, I don't know, like, do I wasteland their other land here? Like, they're not doing anything. I don't think I do. I think I just have a better chance of drawing another land and potentially Hull Breacher. No, I changed my mind. Because now I can't cycle Hollow One. And I sure as the hell ain't card casting all the ones, so. Okay. Like, if I can get a Stitcher Supplier into the graveyard, like, it's not terrible. I'd love to bazaar and just dump some cards in my yard. I can put a hollow one into play. The problem is that really turns their academy on. I think I wait and see if I can get these vines going to do that. Because the, the Venge mines could get me back in this game. And allow me to cast a Hogak, too. So what that will require is me to find a Rootwalla. 
or another hollow one. Or to, or to, uh, I'll just scoop to that. All right. Wow, that was rough, guys. That was really rough. So I'm playing against Tinker. I don't think on the draw I want to go too crazy here. I could see bringing Collector Roofs in here. I do really like Hogak. Another draw, I would consider bringing in the traps. That's a freaking awkward hand. This is what you sign up for when you don't play serum powders. Juking your opponent by not playing a bazaar and just starting to cast your spells may, uh, uh-oh. Okay, that's good news for me. I didn't do anything. Let's see if we can resolve that. I mean, it's really powerful if it resolves. Here we go. Uh, I don't want to attack into a hall breacher. They do have vamp. That is likely very, very bad for me. The good news is they're low on resources here, and I, if I can resolve a collector roof next turn, like it could be really powerful for me. I anticipate they're likely just going to tinker here into Citadel would be my guess, but if they're on Sphinx, that's a probably better line for them. I do have three Basajus in my deck. I should have them all in my, my main now, and I do. Yeah, there's a tinker for sure. I can't do anything. Let's see what they do. It is a citadel. Okay. Wow. Unfortunately, I can't drain them because I don't have a black source. Okay. Collector Roof can deal with that. Okay. No playing around it. Now, if they just even rip a fight, uh, force off the top of the citadel that means a death right could be lethal okay 
It's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Obviously very fragile here, but I feel like we're doing well, given the brokenness of what my opponent has done so far. Oof, that's awful. That was a good one for them for sure. Now they can remove my oof. Then they might just vault key me here. Okay, my death right to activation does win. If they kill my collector roof here and pass. Time walk, okay, that's a good one. I'm presuming they can just kill my oof. Let's see. Down to one. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Post demonic tutor, too, eh? Well, that was an unexpected win from there, but I have to tell you that it does feel nice to win with non-bizarre hands. This is one of the strengths of these type of builds, and one of the things that I love about Cradlevine. And, of course, John Hogakvine was being played before we were seeing Cradlevine, so... All right. Well... I kind of just think we need to... Go about our business here. I don't think uh, Dryad Arbor is really where I really want to be here. I think just having the Deathrite Shaman is very important to be able to turn Besage on and cast Collector Roof more than really anything. Maybe I just do this. Look, I acknowledge that my ray trap is like four my ray traps is a lot, but if I can keep myself alive, there's a chance that we can win with this deck. Okay. Well, I mean, look, I've got a vigor here. Probably a hull breacher. I'm going to force their hand here. Do I even care about my graveyard? I probably do. Or do I kill their mana? The truth of the matter is if they do have hull breacher here, it's very bad for me. They don't. Okay. Okay. Let's see. So once upon a time can definitely go. How much do I want to play around Tabernacle? I think I can get rid of the Bazaar. And I think I get rid of the Verdant Catacombs, right? Okay, that's, oh. Of course, cast the death rate. Not a bad turn. Yep. Just having some tabernacle insurance here is pretty strong. Okay. 
Upkeep Bazaar. Not unhappy with that. I don't think I'm going to fetch. I mean, oof, geez. Just peel. And dig through time. That's a good one. I mean, maybe I just go and get a Badlands here. Okay, I've got them on a Mana Crypt flip here, guys. No complaint from me. All right. We will take that, guys. Improbable win, but we got away with a... A big force of vigor had a really nice turn where we got a uh, couple hollow ones in the play. Emptied our hand and yeah, we we're able to ride it out from there. Okay, guys, here we are around four. Um, I think this is worth trying. We have a force of vigor up. We've got a once upon a time. Some mana to, to cast things. I'm not really sure what we're playing against, but possibly bizarre if my opponent's down to five. Four. This is too much to ask to see you go down to three. Okay, my opponent did hold at four. So one of the tricks you've got to watch out for is when you've got interaction with a once upon a time in your hand. So your opponent goes something like this, Mox, right? You don't want to fire the Vigor off before you do the, the once upon a time unless your motive is to pitch. Oh, is this Shops or Jewel? Karn. Um, I am going to once upon a time here because I'm going to Vigor now. But I'd like to find a Bazaar there. In all honesty, a Stitcher Supplier might just be really what I need. But perhaps I want the Taiga to cast the Death Rite to ensure I can get a Hogak in case I get Wastelanded. This is Shops. Yeah, I think that's correct. Hmm. I got to pitch one of these two, though. That's the issue. Can't get Stitcher Supplier. Not sure. I would have done that perhaps differently. So,
I think I take my opponent off land. Now, of note, they still have a Karn here, and Karn is a bit of a scary card. Okay, it just peels a tomb. Okay, I guess I'll get a black red Boundlands, maybe. Vengevine, please. We did hit a vine. That's big game. Let's see here. This is feeling a little precarious to me. I got to dodge a wasteland here. Okay, they're just pumping. No, oh, geez, another gak, eh? We hit a blood gas too. Another vine? No. Not complaining at getting a vine going here. This is really big game, actually. And we're going to go after that Karn. Yeah. And play with a Taiga. Playing with no Bazaar here, guys. This is like Legacy Hogak. Mm, they did get a wasteland. Okay. Incinerating Bridge is a problem here. Fraction Metamorph. Okay. That I can live with. And then they wasteland me. Sure. Mm -hmm. Coming in. Probably should have pre pre combat cast that basking root wall in case I get wastelanded, but okay. My opponent is making a game out of this. I can't believe it. Double wasteland me now? It's pretty sweet. They're just a tabernacle away from, from winning the game.
I still cast Holgak here. They're very dead next turn. Okay. Uh, my opponent made a pretty good game out of that. Okay. So what do I want here? I could see some collectors coming in here. So this of the void is not going to be great. Yep. Do we want Mind Break Trap is what I'm asking myself, but I don't think so. Maybe I bring in a couple collector roofs. Something I can find with Once Upon a Time. Let's try that. Hmm. We've got a vigor up. It's dangerous, but I, I'm going to try it, guys. I really am enjoying these non bizarre hands. They're so interesting. Bobble. That's pretty devastating, actually. This was very much on the back of that Mox and Vigor. If they do play a Sphere, I can perhaps cast my Jet. Bizarre. The Sage Room, okay. That was actually a really good draw. Okay. Did not find a land, which was what I was really looking for. But next turn, I have a chance of being able to animate a vine through this. <sighs> if I find a land that can cast a death right shaman, and I can pitch the blazing root walla. Ooh, that's a big one. Okay. Golos. Mm-hmm. Gonna get countered.
I'm hoping to find another vine there, but it just is what it is. I will keep the other vine here if I have to sacrifice my snake or my uh, vine. All right. I mean, look, it's not perfect, guys, but I'm not far off of casting a whole guy here if I can find one. And... I mean, I'm losing this quite badly. A vexing Bomb is just so good against what I'm doing. Uh-oh. Don't have more. Another snake. Okay. They didn't attack? Weird. Well, I'm going to spin here. Ooh. Can't cast throws through Bobble. You know what? I, I honestly think the Deathrite Shamans might, might be doing something here. I'll get rid of these. I don't think there's any reason to play cute here. Oh, does that counter my Hokak? I thought I cast it. Oh, okay. It does. Okay. Yeah, that's game. I thought it I thought because I cast it, but it's no mana. Yeah, Bobble just hoes me there. Okay, one ch chalice back in. Let's just go about our business. In all honesty, I, I think Collector Roof is fine, but I just really want to enable my powerful stuff here. It's, this is going to be a tough matchup, but I feel like we certainly can do some damage. Even that game, I felt like we were playing it, but... Obviously, vexing ball on turn one when you're on the draw is, is pretty hard. We still were able to get a blood gas and a vine into play. I would like to play first. Yep. Yeah. I'm not complaining. Hmm. Like, can I move off the bazaar here? Can I, AK, do I have permission to dump the second one? I'm not sure I can do that quite yet. Yep, I gotta do it. The other cards are quite good in this situation. Like, hopefully, it's just wasteland. Go. Yep. I would like to play around Tabernacle here, but I think I need to get my death right out and just pray that it works. 
And this then will enable Besaju and Wasteland next turn. But we continue to pressure our opponent. Okay, that's a big one. Oh, that's unfortunate that they've got the extra mana. My man, mana denial plan is kind of screwed here. Okay. This feels like a Golos, or a huge snake, maybe. Yeah, Golos is far worse for me. I just get Tab. Tabby does cause me issues. Yeah, it's Tab. Can't even attack through. Hmm. That is a bad card against me. Well, <sighs> yes, I would like to pay it. Yes, I would like to pay this as well. No, I will not pay that. That was not bad. So, I could besage you their workshop and try and stifle them on mana. They have to pay for their Golos. Or I could kill their Golos, push four damage, and wasteland them. No, I can't do that. Because I, I need to be able to. I think I'm going to sit tight here. Probably will Wasteland their workshop in the upkeep. I mean, I guess I'm kind of just committing to playing around this tabernacle here if I'm wastelanding the workshop. And I mean, if they slam a crucible or something here, this is also another thing that's really bad for me. Okay. So the Besaju plan is just kind of gone. This is a sphere. No. This has to be the wasteland here. Guess that Mox was a good draw. Uh, 
Cauldron, that's pretty damn good too. I can take their uh, two mana sources here, or I can... Kill their Golos. This is a tough decision. Jeez, I keep one of their flips. The issue I have here is that I do need to find my way through this Golos. So one of the things I could do here, guys, is I could gamble and not do anything and see what my... Oh, they've got a dismember. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. And, like, if they don't play a land here... Okay, I'm glad I didn't do it. I'm glad I waited a second. Sort of. Let's see. Do I just nuke these two things now? I can't currently drain them. So it's not super, super helpful. I don't know. I, I just don't know, guys. The Mana Crypt is helping me. And now that I know that they have an Ancient Tomb between the Ancient Tomb and the Mana Crypt, it's possible that I can somehow find a way here. They've won every flip they've had. Bizarre. Interesting. I do worry about Crucible somewhat, but I feel like I kind of need to get damage in, right? I've won every flip. I think they've won four flips in a row. It's pretty scary. I'm going looking for blood gas here. There's one. Now with two death rights, I can start draining. So that does matter. I mean, my opponent is uh, under some pressure here. They did finally lose a flip. Oh, by the way, yeah, Blood Ghost is irrelevant. I did find a Ghost, but they have Cage. Cage is not an effective card against this deck. I, I mean, I guess 
It gets blood gassed and vines. It doesn't stop Hogak. I can just cast Hogak from my hand. So I'm feeling somewhat more confident here now that my opponent has lost one flip and they only have an Ancient Tomb in play. They're attacking. Probably pretty reasonable. Well, let's see if they lose the flip. They did. All right. Nice one for us. Okay. All right. Much better. Um, my opponent likes to play Tinker decks. No idea what I'm playing against, though. Um, probably going to put Pasejo away. See if I can find a Vengevine here. Did find a vine. Another vine. I feel pretty good about that. So they're dead next turn. Okay. Opponent didn't do anything. So, I, of course, I have no idea what my opponent's playing against, but I feel like they could be playing some type of combo. I'm going to hedge a little bit. Not a little bit. I'm going to hedge a big bit. Let's see if I can't uh, find a way to be a little bit sneaky. Now, of course, I could be severely punished for my sideboarding here. If, if they're not on something like that, but oh, this is a nice looking hand. Opponent's mulligan down to three cards so far. So we have a chance. line. Yep. Down to two. So what's the likelihood my opponent has a tabernacle here? Oh, Ancestral? Come on, brav. None of Mulligan's cracked. So what I could do here, guys, what I could do No, 
I'm not doing that. I was thinking about playing out Deathrite Shaman here. Let's hope that they don't have anything here. Okay. Well, there you have it, guys. We have a solid 4-1 here. And I feel like that deck ran pretty well. Kind of funny that that last, uh, that last game we sided into basically our entire sideboard minus the ley lines. I didn't see one of those cards in my opener, but my opponent mulligan down low trying to find a stopper card, and they found ley line, which of course was not going to stop what we were trying to do there so yeah i don't know uh, i ran a league earlier with cradle vine had a really solid 4-1 running this one now uh solid 4-1 again and say what you will i mean there's no interaction in this deck uh, in the main with the with the exception of force of vigor and it did pretty well in this metagame so let's see guys anyways I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on this particular list. And yeah, I do appreciate you hanging out and we're going to see you next time.